Okay, so a customer brought in this truck. It's a 1947 Ford, one ton flatbed, and it needs some service. It's got a little bit of a kind of a loose condition in the steering. The transmission oil is, I guess, was really dirty when the customer changed the oil. It was like chocolate cake mix or something. And it needs a full service greasing and checking all the fluids and a couple other things. So let's get in the shop and see what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna be going around on this truck and greasing the front end, these different fittings. And we've got a couple problems here I noticed. I accidentally hooked the exhaust here and uh, ripped a little hole in here, so I'm gonna to have to replace this piece of exhaust here. Not a big deal. The transmission is we're gonna drain the oil out of here and I'm gonna remove this inspection cover and check the condition of the inside of the transmission and see if we really need to rebuild this transmission or not. I'm suspect we might not be really need to rebuild the transmission, but I could be wrong. And we're gonna grease everything else along here, drive shaft and everything.
Twitch. So it looks like somebody used some anaerobic sealer on here, which is a little, I don't know, I, I, I use RTV and a gasket, thin layer, but somebody just used some stuff they had laying around, looks like here to do this cover. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's not a restored transmission. We'll inspect these gears and clean this out and see what's going on in there. Yeah, I think this transmission's got to come out of the truck. This has never been out before. Okay, so we determined that the transmission in this truck needs to come out, so we're going to start doing that. First thing is take the floor cover off and work on the inside.
Let's see, number three screws. This has got that uh, quick release deal on it. Need the sunscrews. This might be that setup. Ah, this is the setup where your unscrews. Good. Take this little pin out. Want to drop that in the transmission? While I'm waiting for him to take the drive shaft off, I might as well talk about some tools and some items that I've had here in this video um, I forgot to talk about before. One are these wrenches, uh, they're called Capri wrenches. I'll show a picture of these and I'll have a link in the description for these. They're really nice, I purchased them online. They were good value and they work really well. They're a uh, combination ratcheting wrench with 15 degree head and they have a switch on them, uh, which makes it really nice when they don't have a switch, you can get stuck if you're in a tight area and you can get stuck and you have to tighten the bolt back up again to take the wrench off. It's kind of silly. So when you have the wrench with the ratchet on it or the switch, uh, it works really good. And you're going to see the Milwaukee circular saw in this video. I'm also going to put that in the description, a link to that. It's a really cool saw for cutting metal. It works really well and saves a lot of time. And uh, there may be a couple other items. So pay attention to the description and check it out. this here. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna have to oh yeah there was tension on that. That's what that's what was causing this vibration. See this here? Yep. Let's see how I can't get the drive shaft to it's the wrong drive shaft. That's what's wrong with it. Okay. Go ahead and take yours out. Awesome. All right. Take that up. Now we can let that come down. That's why this thing was not was vibrating because this thing had no um, room for that. So can you hold this end here? Yeah. Just hold this up. I have to take this off. All right. Now we can take this to the uh, drive shaft shop and get this thing shortened so that it uh, it uh, is not going to be bound up in there. That's what was happening. The suspension was coming down and this drive shaft was pushing like this together and it had nowhere to go and it was this awful vibration. That's what it is right there. So we're going to we're gonna, uh, get that shortened up. It shouldn't be a big deal. And this transmission still needs to get rebuilt though. That was really dirty in there, really nasty. So we're going to take that apart next. All right, cool. Get this drive shaft out of here. One thing I did think of is how am I going to get this transmission down? Um, the transmission has to come out this way and come down here. So we're going to have to use uh, one of these. Uh, not really. I think we'll just have to take the thing down. By hand? Yeah. Probably have to take it down by hand. Starter motor bolt here. 
is really not a good way. Well, we could, you know, we could actually, um, it's still sitting on its mounts. It's not gonna go anywhere. We could actually take this out and lower the whole truck down the ground and then bring the, the cherry picker in the side um, and take the weight with the cherry picker and then lower it onto the floor. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot, a lot better option to do it that way. So let's do that. So right. yeah, if you could just take, disconnect this here and uh, we'll, we'll go back down with it and use the cherry picker. It's gonna be a lot better option. Under the strap, uh, go underneath the uh, the oil pan. Oh, okay. The oil pan. Right there. Oil pan. There you go. The ground part. Yep. There you go. Okay. It's not going anywhere. All right. That's good. Finish taking this out. And All out on your side? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're all out on my side. So, all right. Um, now I'm going to bring, I want you to hold this, get this lined up right here when it all right. picks it up. Yep. I'm get the. Uh, you help guide that through the hole? Yeah. It's going to hit the floor. No. Let me go up front. Got to push it, push it forward like that. Okay? Yep. Let me go like that. See how it's kind of clear? Yep. Going to shove it like that. You got it? Yep. You got to push on it. It's hard to push. Push it forward or backwards? Towards the engine. All right. Yep. Ready? Yep. Oh, no, it's doing it again. Now you gotta push on it. Nope. It's not going anywhere. There we go. Nope. How about now? Yeah, now you can start going up. There it comes. There you go. No. You got stuck again. It's gonna go. We just gotta shove it. Here we go, shut that. Get rough with it. So, after lots of language that I can't have on my YouTube channel and cursing to get this thing out of the truck, we finally removed this from that Ford truck. This transmission is probably designed to come out of that truck with the engine. It's not a tube, a torque tube drive shaft. It's an open drive shaft, but it's an odd truck. It's not an F1 or an F2. It's not even an F3. It's like a ton and a quarter, a weird setup. The cross member is riveted in. Really the way to take this out is to remove the engine and transmission together and then take the tranny off and do your thing. But I didn't want to take the engine and transmission out. The engine's a lot of work. So we got it out and we didn't break anything or damage anything. And I believe we, you know, we got it out so we can wiggle it back in again. But, um, um, I'm sure someone many a time has done that on these old Ford trucks. So let's get into it and tear this transmission apart.
shaft comes out. Comes out. It comes out. Okay, now take apart this. The back of the case looks like this thing's got to come off here. other end comes out this way so if you want to get that this shaft has got to go that way we got to watch where those shims came out of what a dirty transmission full of rust Oh, see these two, see these two spacers? They got a, one goes on each end of that shaft. I remember that. It's just a spacer to keep the, that's an axial spacer to keep that gear from moving around yeah. back and forth. While I'm here, I can take this one out. Oh, another one came out? Yeah. That's the other that's the other roller bearing, okay. Drift, hold the case please. Okay, this arm comes out. Now that should allow us to take the cluster gear out. Ouch. Should come right off the top like that. And we just have the reverse gear in there, which I don't think I'm gonna take out. Uh, There's nothing wrong with it. And I'm gonna clean the case first. So now we're gonna get all this stuff. Uh, let's get this over to the uh, to the wash machine. So before I put this transmission together, I just wanted to talk to everybody about those previous few minutes of video that you've seen. We put the parts into a hot wash tank. It's really hot water, uh, you know, pretty much you can't put your hands in it, it's hot. And it's got special soap in it that doesn't foam up. And it cleans the parts and takes off all that grease and oil. And then we put it into a tumbler here at the shop and it takes off all of that you know, leftover paint and really hard grease and things that are difficult to remove. Plus it also grinds off a lot of rust and just 
layers of grime on all the gears and internal parts, and it comes out really nice. You saw the inside of that shifter tower, and look at it now, how clean it is. And you just wipe it out, and it's just about ready to be assembled. Okay, everybody, so this transmission is the one we pulled out of the Ford truck, and we didn't have our camera going for the rebuild on this. We had it for the teardown. The assembly is just the reverse order of the teardown. I suggest when you're rebuilding a transmission like this that you use a camera, take a lot of pictures if you've never done it before. I've rebuilt a lot of these, so I don't need to do that, but I wanted to go over the assembly, the basic assembly process on this real quick and just go over that so if you need some help putting it back together, uh, it, it goes pretty quick. It's not, it's a very simple transmission. Uh, again, this is the Ford 4-speed out of the 47 Ford that we're working on. And so I'm going to go through the assembly here. Okay, so we're going to start at the bottom of the transmission. So when you go to put this together, the Here's the case. This is going to be completely empty. You're going to start with these two shafts right down here. This one and this one. This shaft right down here is for the main cluster gear. And then this shaft right here is for the reverse gear, which is on the side over here. This shaft also, don't forget this, this is, uh, I believe, a 5 8 diameter shaft. This holds the reverse shifter fork. That's all this does. And this is removed this direction out the back. And the same with these two shafts here. These are also removed straight out the back this way. Don't hit them in that way. So when you assemble this, you put the cluster gear in the bottom, which is the big gear. It's got three different size gears on it. It only goes in one way, it goes down the bottom. And you, you have the bearings and the spacer loaded inside it. And then one on, e on each end, there is a bronze um, thrust washer, good one on each end. Some models of these transmissions are a little different, some don't have that. But you assemble that, get it down inside the transmission, then you slide this shaft in from the outside, from the back here, and hit it inside slowly. It slides in with your hand to get started, and as it gets in there further, once you get to the other side and it starts to go through the case over here, you can see right down in the middle, right behind this plate here, that shaft is gonna come through right in here. So once you get to that side of the transmission, it gets a little bit harder to, you gotta hit it with a hammer. And of course you wanna use a brass drift. And you install that, you install the reverse gear here next, and this shaft, then you install the, the reverse shifter fork and this shaft and make sure you put the cotter pin on over here. I have not installed that yet, but there's a cotter pin that goes right through here. There's a groove in the, in the shaft, you put that in here. 
Then you slide the main shaft in here, which goes in from the back, and you slide on your first and second gear gear, you slide on your third gear, and then you can put the bearing on in the back with the various washers and spacers, etc., and assemble this whole back part here with this transmission mount and gaskets and this seal. That all goes in the back and that can all go on. Then in the front, you install the input shaft right here with, there's a bearing on it, you have to change the bearing on that. And I believe there's a splash guard on that, uh, anti-splash guard for the bearing. And you could install, you install this, it attaches to the main shaft with a roller bearing. That's the third roller bearing in this transmission. It's a smaller one. And then you put this cover on here with these four bolts. And that finishes the top, the main shaft. Then you install your shifter tower here. And we actually went through and rebuilt this. You can get all the parts for this, springs and balls and stuff. So we rebuilt this on the bench. It's not hard to do, it's very easy with simple tools. And you put your shifter in. These on, a, on this Borg Warner, this collar is threaded. So if you're trying to take the shifter off, check this. It actually has some flats on it where you could put a pair of pliers on there or a large open end wrench, but this is threaded. So that's how that comes off. And then the final piece goes on is the uh, bell housing right here. This is the uh, adapter to go from the transmission to the Ford uh, six cylinder engine. It has the throw up bearing fork here mounted in it. And you tighten up these bolts right here. There's six of them and uh, that's it. You're good to go. And when you go to put the, before you put the transmission, you've got to put the throw up bearing on and there's a, there's a little uh, spring perch right here where the spring attaches for the throw up bearing. We're gonna do that in a couple minutes. And then uh, this transmission's ready to go back in the truck.
listening ear. I got, you know, I got, I don't have to. Yeah, yeah, okay. I know we talked, right? getting the transmission back in the truck. It was required two guys, it was really cramped, and we ended up 
couldn't really get a good shot with the video with the camera, so we left it alone. We just put the transmission in. All we did was pick it up off the floor, wiggle it around, get it in there, and it bolted up to the engine. Not a big deal. So that's completed. The drive shaft of this truck ended up being too long. Whoever had this truck before put a drive shaft in probably from a similar truck, similar model, but it was a little bit different in length. Different, there's a little bit difference in length. So we had to have that shortened at the drive shaft shop, but that's being done now. We're gonna show that on a separate video, installation of the drive shaft, and we're gonna take this truck for a test drive. So check that out and uh, like and subscribe to our channel here if you like this. And always remember, keep that old iron running.